Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Minecraft Java video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a FPS stress test map which I've put together. I have done a FPS test map previously, but I have now gone ahead and created a new map where you can actually go ahead and stress test your Minecraft Java game and see how much FPS and lag spikes you are getting inside your game. I am running the latest version of Minecraft and this is version 1.18.1 as you guys can see. And by using this stress test, FPS test map, you will be able to test loads of different mods, mod packs, and compare it to your FPS and compare it to how much lag spikes you are getting with the vanilla version of the game. So let me just quickly show you what this stress test map is all about and then we're going to do some FPS testing and see how much lag spikes I do get inside my game using this FPS test map. Alright, so let me just quickly go into first person mode here and let me just exit out of this card. As you guys can see, I have actually gone ahead and created this track using some power rails and detector rails as well and i've put them in a combination so the cart is actually moving on its own there i have actually had to put this fence there as well because there are villagers in here as well and you will find them walking onto the track and stopping the cart from its direction so the thunder and rain has been turned on as well to actually try and give the system more of a stress on the performance side if you do look up you will actually notice that your fps does drop substantially if we come over here and actually go through these tracks you can see that there are other villages around it will actually be feeding in data from the distance there as well when you do get to this bit you can see that there is a fence here with some sheep in it as well so you will go past this bit here on your cart as well there is a bend here so you can see that there's one two and three bends here once you do get to this bend you might notice a bit of a lag spike because it is actually changing directions and depending on where you are looking you might actually see a performance dip as well there is some water here as well as you guys can see you should be able to see that from your cart when the cart is moving there is a bit of lava here as well you might not be able to see this bit there but i just put that in there just for fun if we go slightly ahead over here there is a tunnel over here and if we just go inside this tunnel now because it is raining you might notice that the fps stabilizes when you do go through this tunnel but once you actually come out of this tunnel you may notice a bit of a fps dip there because of the rain and your system will have to adjust to the rain coming in from the tunnel over there if we go a bit more further you will notice there is a bit of lava over here so you will actually go past this as well and then finally we do actually get to go close into the village over here and you will be able to see some villagers and animals walking around and this should also put some stress onto your system as well let me quickly go ahead and find the cart because that is actually moving on its own. Then I'll just quickly enter the cart using the right click button like so. So as you guys can see I just pressed right click and now I am inside the cart and I am in first person mode here. Let me quickly show you guys the settings which you need to use for this FPS test and then we're going to run the FPS counter and the lag spike test as well. So let me quickly go into my options. The first thing you need to do is actually make sure that your FOV is set all the way to the highest setting. So as you guys can see it is actually set to Quake Pro. Now the default setting is actually 70 which is the normal setting for FOV but from the previous test we have seen that having a high FOV does actually impact your FPS quite a bit so by having a high FOV we can actually put more stress onto our system let's go into the video settings you can see that I have actually put everything to the maximum so all of these sliders have been turned to the right hand side and they have been turned to the maximum value possible so as you guys can see render distance is 32 chunks simulation distance 32 chunks graphics is on fancy and the chunk builder i have left it on threaded as you guys can see over there smooth lighting on maximum v-sync obviously you have to turn off and do make sure that your max frame rate is set to unlimited otherwise you won't be able to see anything past whatever the slider has been set to so do make sure that the max frame rate is set to unlimited and v-sync has been turned off view bobbing it does not matter you can leave that on or off and same for the gui scale as well you can leave it as it is or you could actually turn it down depending on your preference if we go down i have put the brightness to the bright setting and i have put clouds to fancy for the full screen i have actually left this in a windowed mode so i can show you guys but you can run this in full screen mode as well depending on your system if that can handle it 
particles. Obviously, we have to leave that on all of the particles. And then entity shadow set to on. Mip map level set to number four. Distortion effect 100%. The entity distance is set to 100% by default, but I have gone ahead and set that to 500%. FOV effects again 100% for that. And I have gone ahead and turned off the auto save indicator. So as you guys can see, most of these settings have been set to the maximum that we can achieve inside the game. I will do a test with Opt fine and i'll do a test with sodium and we will go ahead and put all of those settings for optified and sodium to the maximum value then we will see how it compares to the vanilla games lag spike as well let me click on done and go back inside our game and now i can actually go ahead and enable a fps counter now i do recommend you guys either get fraps or msi afterburner the first of all see how much fps you are getting inside your game it is advisable to try and see the lowest fps you are getting and then the maximum FPS you are able to achieve and then work out the average. So I'm going to go ahead and enable my MSI afterburner and let's have a look at the FPS I am able to get inside my game. So as you guys can see, it is hovering somewhere around the 30 FPS mark. As you guys can notice there, it is dipping to the 20s there and then it is actually going above 30 as well. Now this is quite an intensive test and it can actually impact your system. So if you guys are on a low end machine, you may notice that this test will actually put your system and grind it to a halt. So in that case, you may want to test your system out on the medium base settings. But medium to high base systems, then hopefully that should actually be able to test it out and see what kind of FPS you are getting inside your game. So as you guys can see, I am getting on average 30 FPS. It is going into the 40s there, but it, it is actually dipping again. And you can see from that graph when the dips do occur and when the FPS does actually go down. Now, the next thing you want to do is actually press Alt and F3 on your keyboard. Do make sure that you don't accidentally press Alt and F4 because that will actually exit out of the game. So just make sure that you are pressing Alt and F3 and that will actually bring up this screen, which is the debug section there of Minecraft. On the bottom left, we can see I am getting a few lag spikes there. We can see from the red lines there. And basically, we need that to show a constant green section in that area there so you guys can see that it is actually showing a bit of red there now let's have a look at this tunnel bit here you can see that when i exit out of this tunnel we can see a major chunk there of red when we come out of that tunnel same thing for when we go around corners as well we will see that actually turn to red and the fps will dip so hopefully you guys will be able to see how this performs in your vanilla game and then if you guys are testing any other mods against your vanilla game then you should be able to see a nice comparison of how those mods are able to give you some better fps and stop these type of lag spikes so as you guys have seen now i am getting quite a lot of lag spikes and fps dips from my tests here. Let's go ahead and see what the performance is like with Optifine. And I'm also gonna do the same test with Sodium as well and see how that performs and which one of those mods is able to give me a better FPS count on my system there and less lag spikes on my system because that is also important as well as FPS. So let me go ahead and now open up Optifine and I'll be right back. All right, so I am now in the game with Optifine loaded. If I go into my options section here, click on video settings, we can see that this is Optifine HD H4 Ultra. And we can see that these are the Optifine type settings. And we do have a shaders button here, so we definitely do know that we have got Optifine installed. Let's have a look at some of these settings now. It is taking some of the settings from the default game. You can see that the render distance has been set to 32 chunks, but we can actually go ahead and set this to 48. But for the testing purposes, we are going to keep it consistent across all of the tests today. So I'm going to set this to 32 to be in line with the vanilla and the sodium test as well let's go ahead and enable and disable some of these settings to bring them close to a fair comparison let me go ahead and actually turn off the dynamic lights because in sodium we don't have that option i'm going to go into my shaders and make sure that they are turned off as well in the detail section i'm going to turn the clouds to fancy and the same thing for 
the trees as well. The rest of the stuff I'm going to leave as it is and you can see the entity distance and biome blend has been set to the maximum there. I'm going to go into the quality section as well. I'm going to make sure that custom sky has also been turned off and same thing for custom textures as well because we don't actually have those settings in sodium and if I go into the performance section we can see that I have actually gone ahead and turned on some of these options. I have actually left smooth world and smooth FPS off so I can actually see what the maximum FPS would be but we will actually enable these later on and see if they help with eliminating some of the lag spikes that we might be getting. So let's go inside our game now and let's load up the FPS stress test. Alright, so immediately we can see that I am getting much better FPS than I was getting in my vanilla game. So now you can see that I am getting close to 140 FPS there. It is able to jump up to the 200 mark there, but it also does a drop down as well. The FPS chart with Optifine at the bottom left there does look different to the default vanilla chart as you guys can see. I am able to get between 150 to 220 FPS there. Obviously you will have to make sure that you do a few laps around this track to try and get a more precise figure there. If we go ahead and enable some of the other settings in the performance section, let me go ahead and turn on smooth world and smooth FPS. Now the FPS should actually drop once I do that as you guys can see but in terms of the lag spikes then they should be less and it should give us a more smoother experience. So if you guys are seeing more lag spikes in your game, you might want to turn those settings on and see how they perform. And as we can see at the bottom left there, it is actually doing better than what it was doing before for the lag spikes there. The FPS has dropped, however, we are able to get a smoother gameplay. So Optifine does actually boost our FPS, we can see that, and we are able to get much better FPS and less of a lag spike situation with Optifine. Let's go ahead and run the same test with Sodium and see how that performs. I do know that my system does actually work better with sodium but for specific hardware you might actually find that Optifine works better. Do let me know in the comment section below if you guys are getting better FPS with Optifine compared to better FPS with sodium and also do make sure to test this out with other mods as well and other mod packs to try and see what kind of FPS you are getting in your game. It would be interesting to see what kind of results you guys are getting. I am going to put some of my results in the description as well so you guys can see. Okay so let me close this down and now let me go ahead and open the same thing with the sodium. Alright so the game is now loaded up and as you guys can see at the bottom left here that's say Minecraft 1.18.1 fabric and if I click on options and video settings we can see that these menu options do look different to the Optifine menu options and they are to do with sodium. You can tell from the black type backgrounds there. As you guys can see all of these settings are similar to what I did set with Optifine. Brightness is set to 100. We've got the render distance there, max shadow distance and simulation distance there set to 32 chunks and then obviously we have set the max frame rate to maximum and turned off the v-sync if i go into the quality section all of these other options have been set to the maximum and the same thing for the performance as well i have gone ahead and left all of the performance options to their default settings and similar thing for the advanced section you will notice that i do have a shader pack button here this is to do with iris shaders which is another mod which is actually installed alongside sodium so do ignore this if you haven't actually got a shader pack button here this is to do with iris shaders but i have actually gone ahead and disabled the shaders as well just to make the test similar to how it was with optifine so let's go ahead and now actually run the test map and see how it performs all right so you guys can see that again similar to optifine i am getting some nice fps there compared to the vanilla game now with sodium it does take a few seconds for the performance to kick in so when you actually jump into a game for the first time you may notice your fps is actually quite low but don't worry it will actually kick in the performance side of sodium and you should get some nice performance in your game so as you guys can see it is hovering close to 140 fps there and it is able to peak up to 170 fps there 
on the FPS counter, but close to 140 FPS on average, I would say. If we go ahead and enable the console there, if we have a look at the bottom left, we can see that that is a nice and smooth green section there, compared to what I was seeing in my vanilla game where we were seeing red lines all over the place, but now I am able to see a nice green section there. We will notice a few dips here and there, especially when I go around the corners or when I exit out of that tunnel or when I go into an area that has more NPCs or more stuff happening close to it. But for the majority of the time, you can see on my system, sodium is actually giving me a nice performance there. In Optifine I was getting similar with the settings turned on in the performance section. I am also interested to see if anyone is able to achieve 60 FPS in their vanilla game just by turning all of the settings to the maximum and be able to achieve 60 FPS on this test map here. Hopefully you guys will find this test map useful. As I mentioned earlier, I am going to leave a link in the description on how you guys can go ahead and download and install this FPS stress test map for your Minecraft game. It works in the vanilla game, it works on mod packs as well, so you can go ahead and install this anywhere you want to and you can stress test your PC out today. Again, I would recommend you guys get Fraps or MSI Afterburner as well to see what kind of FPS you are getting inside your game. When you do actually enter the F3 console on your game, the FPS is going to show a lower amount. So just keep that in mind. If you want to get your true FPS value, just make sure that your F3 console is not showing and it is showing the FPS counter on your system. So it's only showing the FPS counter and nothing else. And as you guys can see, my FPS is now showing in the 200 region there. But if I was to go ahead and enable the console, it does actually drop the FPS. That is not the true FPS figure. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys will find this FPS stress test map useful. If you like the video, please do give us a like and also please do subscribe to this channel to help support to help it grow. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.